Hi, I'm Jeff Davis with ROI Training, and this is a concepts video focusing on Google's Data Loss Prevention API. We're going to take a look at what the DLP API can do for you and how you can easily incorporate it into your own applications using Google's cloud client libraries. Let's switch over to the demo environment and I'll show you how it works. So we have a very modest demo app, one that I wrote and am proud of. Uh, and what it does is it allows you to type text in. And when you're done typing, it feeds the text to the DLP API, which inspects the text payload to determine if there's any sensitive information. In this case, there's nothing interesting in my input text. And so the DLP API returns the message that there are no findings. There's no uh, sensitive information found. Now, if I keep adding text, you'll notice that I start getting findings. So this has found a chunk of text in the input, demo at roitraining.com. It has determined that this is likely an email address, and the likelihood is rated from 1 to 5, with 5 being the highest level of certainty. Now, I'm going to add a couple of additional lines that have other data that I am looking for. So for example, my application is looking for credit card numbers and social security numbers. And you'll notice that when the payload is sent to the API, the API sends back multiple findings, one for each piece of sensitive information. The API is doing more than just pattern matching or regular expression matching. It's actually using uh, machine learning models. So it's taking the text payload, it's feeding it into the model, it's doing inference, and it's assigning a probability or a likelihood that each chunk of text is a certain type of sensitive information. You'll notice if I remove the prefix here, the likelihood goes down from five to three. So it still recognizes this series of numbers, but without the SSN in the same line, it's less certain that this is a social security number. By the way, these are not real pieces of data, not a real email address, not a real credit card number, not a real social security number. If I replace the four with a five, you'll notice that the finding goes away because the system knows this is not a legitimate credit card number. And if I remove the prefix here, you'll notice that it is still reasonably certain that this is an email address. But again, that extra little piece of context where it says email right before the email address bumps it up to a five when it comes to a level of certainty. So this is what I would call inline inspection. What it's doing is I have an application which is sending a chunk of data to the API and the API is doing detection and giving me back the results. You can also use the API to actually scan an entire group of files in GCS or a set of tables in BigQuery and so forth. Now, it's great that the system detects that this data exists, but you might want to go a step further. You might want to remediate or uh, take care of the sensitive data. So let's say, for example, this is a chat application and a customer is typing information in this box and your chat operator is going to receive information in the green box. You don't want them to see the actual email address or the credit card number or the social security number. So what you would do is you would have the API not just inspect and detect the sensitive data, but you would have it mask that data. So here's an example of the, type, the typed in content from the customer, and here's what your chat operator would see. Now you'll notice that we've got a masking character and every digit in my credit card number, every character in my email address and so forth gets masked out with a hash mark. If I wanted to give even less information, I could choose to replace the text that had sensitive information with a fixed string value. So in this case, I've just put the word redacted in all three places. And this doesn't show you the number of characters that were in the original uh, text that was input. This is only showing you the fact that there was something there, maybe one character, maybe 50 characters, but we've just replaced it with the word redacted. Or you can actually go to the redact function, and what the redact function does is it doesn't put the word redacted in, it actually just removes the sensitive data. And so here you can see, here's the input data with the values that I don't want to show the end user, and here's the text that they actually receive. 
So this is pretty cool functionality and it's super simple to include in your applications. In fact, it will take you less time to implement your calls to the API than it does to build the user interface for the application. So I'm gonna switch over to GitHub and we're gonna take a look at the underlying code for the application. So this is a Python app. The first thing you're gonna do before you start running your application is you're gonna import some Python libraries. And the first of these is a Python cloud client library from Google specifically for making calls to the DLP API. So this is gonna make it really easy. I don't have to write a bunch of REST API boilerplate code. Now, if we look at the main application, uh, I'm just gonna scroll down and you can see here is the handler that takes the incoming request. So if the person loads the DLP demo, what this is going to do is simply render a web page. So let's go take a look at this web page. Um, it's just a bunch of uh, HTML code that defines the form. But if you scroll down, you can see that it's importing a script file and the script file is going to be what takes the input text and makes the API call, gets back the results and renders it on the page. So if we take a look at this script, we can see that what we're doing here basically is um, when somebody enters in text, don't worry about the boilerplate up here, uh, basically what we're going to do is we're gonna specify the path. So this is going to make a call to my application called uh, using the DLP results handler. And I'm gonna pass it some options. So uh, I'm gonna make a post request, the data that's being sent is JSON data. Uh, this is going to have the text. This is in the left-hand side of the screen. And then it's gonna have the type of action. This is the button that is currently selected. So inspect versus redact versus replace and so forth. And then I'm simply gonna make a call to my application. So if we go back to the main app, you can see that here is the handler that receives the incoming request. So when the user types in some text and they stop typing, this is gonna send the text to my application and my application is going to basically check and see if it's inspect, it's going to call this inspect method. And if it's anything else, if it's redact or remove or, or mask, it's going to call the deidentify method. Now it's calling this method in the uh, DLP module. If we scroll up here, you can see that we've imported the DLP module. And if you look over here, here's the DLP module. And this is basically the meat of the part of the application that makes the DLP call. So I'm importing that library that we uh, installed on the server. And then I am creating a DLP service client. This is basically an authenticated connection that talks to the DLP service. I'm specifying what project I want to run these API calls in. This controls who gets billed for the API execution. And then I'm specifying the type of inspections that I wanna do. So this is just a list of the data types that I want to scan for. So this is looking for email addresses and credit card numbers and IP addresses and phone numbers and so forth. And then I'm saying, hey, not only do I want you, when I send you the text, I want you to look for these. And when you send me a result, I want you to send me the original quote that's the text that you found, as well as the finding, which is what kind of data is it and how certain you are. And then I'm going to grab the text that was typed in and was passed to my application. And then what I'm going to do basically is I'm just gonna take that DLP uh, service client and I'm going to call the inspect content method. I'm gonna tell it what project to make the API call in. I'm going to send it the configuration, which is what things I wanna look for, and I'm gonna send it the text item. And then I'm gonna get a response, and I'm gonna to look to see if there were any findings, okay? If there were any findings, then I'm simply going to grab all of the quotes, and I'm gonna grab the info type, and I'm gonna grab the likelihood, and I'm going to put those into the output. If on the other hand, the person calls the uh, redact or replace or mask functions, we're going to use deidentify and we're going to pass it the text that was input as well as the type of remediation action. Okay. And we can see here again, we're going to configure these are the data types that we look for. 
This is, if we're doing replacement, what we want to do is we want to take the quoted value and replace it with a new value, and that's redacted, okay? The redact configuration is just very simple. Just take the matched data out. And then for the masking, I'm basically configuring what kind of character I want to use to replace the text, okay? And there's a little bit of config data here that you can look up in the online documentation. Um, and then basically what I do is I say, all right, given this, I'm gonna create a configuration for de-identification. I'm gonna say what kind of transformations I wanna do, and I'm gonna basically define whether or not I wanna do a mask or a replace or a redact, and then I'm going to use that service client, and I'm going to call the de-identify content method, and I'm gonna pass it the project, I'm gonna pass it what to look for, I'm gonna pass it how to remediate, and I'm gonna pass it the item, okay? So the actual DLP stuff is really quite simple. You just import the library, you configure what you wanna look for, and then if you're doing remediation, you do a little bit of remediation specific configuration, and then it's nothing more than calling the API and grabbing the results, okay? So hopefully you found that interesting and you'll be able to go look up the Cloud Client Library and start making use of the DLP API right away. Uh, if you found this video interesting, go ahead and click on like. If you wanna see other videos that ROI Training has put together, go ahead and look at those videos in our YouTube channel. And if you want to be notified of new videos as we produce them, go ahead and click on subscribe. Thanks very much.